Thank you coaches for being here for our 2021 Kids Incorporated Tackle Football Coaches Meeting. As always, we appreciate all of our coaches coaching any sport, but tackle football, that's a, that's a different animal there. And we certainly appreciate you and your assistance taking the time uh, to coach these young boys and girls throughout the season. Uh, I would want to remind our coaches and assistants, make sure you do have your background checks in. I'm assuming our uh, tackle football head coach as well, but all your assistants who are helping you and we'll allow up to four assistants to help you on the field and, uh, during a game. So make sure they've got everything turned in before the season begins. Let's talk about our game schedules for just a couple of minutes. Those game schedules will be emailed to you on Friday, uh, September 3rd, beginning after 9 o'clock that morning. And you can also start coming by and picking up your team jerseys after 9 o'clock on that Friday morning, September 3rd. First day of checkout coaches will be on Saturday, August 21st. We'll start at 8 o'clock in the morning. and. We'll see how many teams we'll have, see what time we'll finish that day. Probably around noonish or so is what I'm gonna guess, but uh, I wanna try to get as many teams as we can that have their 15 kids that are paid on their teams, uh, have those teams get signed up, and you'll see more information about that. Uh, and your coaches' packets will go out here also. Fields, we'll use the Emerald Independent School District football fields as we have in the past, all middle school fields. Gracious to AISD for those guys allowing us to certainly use those fields. We'll also play four home games for our Canyon teams, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, down at Buffalo Sports Park on the WT practice field as we've done in the past. So look forward to having at least four home games down there, Canyon, and appreciate the Canyon coaches and teams signing up to play with Kids Incorporated. To all teams, but especially our fourth and fifth graders, you'll receive a reminder card uh, when you check out your football equipment on that Saturday morning or the, or the following week when you do check out your equipment, really for all grades, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, it'll be a reminder card of when to turn in your tackle football equipment. Obviously, the season will run from 9-11 to October 17th, weather permitting. And what we'll try to do is have equipment all returned that following week, ending on Friday, October 22nd. We would appreciate all equipment being brought back. That includes your helmet, shoulder pads, and pants. Certainly want to get that back to us. Sixth graders, you'll turn your equipment in after your food bowl game, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. Uh, once we finish, you'll turn everything in at the last game, uh, which will be the food bowl game, which is scheduled for Saturday, October 30th. So make plans and put your calendars together for all sixth grade teams you get to play an extra football game. Uh, the food bowl will be sponsored by Toot and Totem. This will be our 19th year uh, to have the food bowl. And we'll have that down at West Texas A&M on their campus at the new football stadium, Buffalo Stadium down there, which has been in existence about three years now. So looking forward to playing down there. WT is a great sponsor of Kids Incorporated and we certainly appreciate them. Make sure coaches, you do get that equipment turned in. I know that some teams in the past, have, they want to go play in a tournament here and there, but you know, our season finishes with our food bowl on that night of October 30th, and so that's when we do need all of our equipment back. If your team is going to go play in something else or do another uh, activity, our season is finished, so we'll need our football equipment back. You'll have to make other arrangements to get other equipment if you're going to continue your season and play somewhere else in another league or, or in some tournaments. So we appreciate your cooperation on that. Just want to get all of our football equipment turned in when it needs to be turned in, and thank you for uh, your cooperation, and thank you for coaching. What I try to do, if you'll help me out, coaches, uh, after you play your game, sixth graders on the uh, during the weekend, if you will give our office a call or email Tasha, Sims, or myself, and let us know who won your ball game. We try to keep standings. This is the only time of year we keep standings in any sport. But what we'll do is keep the standings, and then between North and South League, try to pit teams against each other from each league for that food bowl game. Uh, that are likeness as far as close in record, similarity as far as roster sizes and things like that, doing the best we can to, to make those games as close as we possibly can to have uh, some really good football games down there on that day. Let's talk about some tackle football rules for a few minutes. We'll go over some highlights here, not every single rule, but we'll, we'll cover enough that we'll understand and certainly can ask more questions. Uh, when we have our tackle football check, I give me a call or come by and see me anytime during the season. 
Uh, weight restrictions, as you know, obviously, for fourth graders, it's 115, fifth is 125, and our sixth graders play at the 135 weight, meaning that uh, anybody that's over those particular weights will be a restricted player, what we call a restricted player, and they'll wear a 90 series number, uh, must play on the interior line, offensive or defensive line, uh, cannot play at a quarterback, running back, or a wide out position. Uh, they will be allowed to be on the punt team, kickoff team. You can be the kicker, you can be the punter. If you happen to pick off a pass or in the air type situation, you're certainly able to return that for a touchdown. So if you'll abide by those, uh, we'll weigh everybody. When you first come in, to, you'll weigh one time when you come in beginning on that Saturday, the 21st, and the teams who will come in that following week. Every child will be weighed one time and one time only. We'll see where you sit as far as your weight goes. But everybody participates. Uh, on the team. Uh, some, some kids will have a 90 series number and some will not though. Coach's mouthpiece and chin strap, extremely two uh, pieces of important equipment. Uh, make sure that you have those on during the game. Our referees will remind you during the game that uh, to make sure they're snapped, to make sure that mouthpiece is in your mouth. That's just a safety a precaution there coaches. So help us out with that if you certainly could. Uh, tennis shoes, rubber cleats will certainly be allowed to be worn, football cleats, things like that. Must wear the assigned Kids Incorporated tackle football jersey for this year. Not allowed to switch jerseys, obviously. And then hard or plastic, excuse me, hard or plaster cast are not permitted. But so if you've got a cast or you've got a kid with a hurt arm or wrist or foot or something's wrong there, they'll not be, they will not be allowed to play uh, when they have that hard or plaster cast on. Once they've had it removed, they're certainly fine to play. Game rules, let's talk about a few of those. Uh, each player will play a minimum of eight plays, a half or 16 plays per game. Uh, make sure we adhere to that the best we can. Some are gonna play more, a lot, a lot of kids will play more than that though. Some of our rosters will be a little bigger than others though, but please maintain that coaches. That's the first call normally I get on a Monday morning is my kid didn't get to play. Uh, I hold our coaches accountable for their playing time, watch, looking at our rules. Uh, listening at the coaches meeting right now what we're talking about make sure your kids are in the game at least half the time it's a good it's a good thing coach to try to teach those uh, players a position to play on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball so it's a lot easier to get those kids in and out of the game also have one of your assistants have a clipboard on the sideline with you and that way they can let you know who's in who's out who's not been in enough who's been out and things like that so we we hope to get to make sure all kids are playing at least half the game and probably all kids will play more some kids don't play as much one game on a saturday maybe they come back sunday and they'll play more so i i leave that up to the coaches we're going to hold you accountable for their playing time uh, let me know of any situations that are coming up for missing practice or something's going on with the family situation certainly give me a call or come by and see us and i'll certainly visit with you about those situations game time obviously is game time uh, don't have any we don't have any forfeits out there the game limit is 75 minutes an hour and 15 minute games it has been in the past consist of four 15 minute quarters halftime will be five minutes each team will be allowed two one minute timeouts per half timeouts not used in the first half may not be carried over for the second half. Must begin the game and end the game with a minimum of 11 players. Let's don't have any short rosters, coaches. If you need players, we need to get those kids signed up. Obviously, get them on your roster before the season begins, though. I want to make sure we have enough players to start and to end the game. I'm not worried about the score. You are obviously, and maybe not, but your parents may be. But uh, if it's a tied game at the end of regulation, the game remains a tie due to time constraints and time limits. Uh, we'll proceed on to the next game. Scoring, obviously a touchdown is worth six points. There'll be no extra points or field goals with Kids Incorporated's uh, Football League. Uh, extra points will be spotted at the three yard line as normal. One point will be awarded for a successful run play and two points will be awarded for a pass play. Extra point attempt that results in a turnover and a turn by the defense for a score, let's say as an example, an interception, uh, that'll be worth two points for that team who picked off the pass on the extra point attempt. Let's talk a little bit about our formations and positions. For our fourth grade teams, you must line up in a standard 4-3 defense, meaning four down linemen, three linebackers. You've got four defensive backs, two corners and two safeties. Linebackers and DBs must be three yards off the line of scrimmage. Your four down linemen uh, line up head to head over the guard, tackler, tight end in your particular formation there. Uh, as I mentioned, cornerbacks three yards off the line of scrimmage. 
Formations and positions, let's continue that. Uh, offensive and defensive material line must be in a three or four point stance at the snap of the ball. This does not include wide receivers, obviously. Fifth and sixth grade coaches, if you'll remind your teams, they may lie for any defensive formation. They choose up to seven linemen on the line of scrimmage. If you have defensive end, that's fine. They may stand up, but they must be no more than two yards off the tight end shoulder, outside shoulder there. So keep that in mind. Our, our officials will remind you of that also. Nose guard in the fifth and sixth grade can be a restricted player or 90 series numbers I mentioned earlier on the defensive line and may play the center position on the offensive line. So just remember those. <clears throat> Teams may line up in any defensive position they choose when the offense is inside your five yard line trying to score. This would certainly be your goal line defense. Offense must have seven players on the line of scrimmage before, before the ball is snapped. If you have an unbalanced line, a guard or tackle tied in one of those situations, make sure the referees know that a play in advance so they'll be looking for that. Offensive linemen may extend their arms out, obviously. We've allowed that in the past. Within the shoulder pad area, they just can't grab on and hold on and hold the defender right there, okay? So that'll be a defensive holding, but they can get them out and uh, protect themselves and issue the block there. Offensive guards and tackles can pull. Crackback blocks and blocks downfield must be above the waist, not in the back or below the waist. No blocking below the waist in the interior offensive line or defensive line there. No crab blocking all offensive linemen must engage the defensive lineman above the waist. Talk a little bit about our special teams. For our punting teams, if you're punting, please make sure the referee knows that you're punting. Teams will be not allowed to rush the punter. Uh, there's no fake pun and, and you can't block below the, excuse me, block below the waist. Uh, the center may snap or hand the ball to the punter. He or she will then punt the ball, and as soon as the ball is punted, teams may take off down the field to pursue the punt. Fumbles will not be called when punting the ball. Let's say you snap it and you drop it. We're not going to worry about that because there's no rush on the punt. Just go ahead and let the punt uh, punter go ahead and punt the ball. Ball will be placed where the ball, uh, when the perfect punter's tackle goes out of bounds. When the untouched ball comes to rest, goes out of bounds, or when the play is whistled dead by the official. And at the 20-yard line, if the ball across the goal line untouched, once the ball is touched, it's a live ball. Footballs are allowed on the punt return. Fair catch rules in effect on all punts. Kickoff for your kickoff team. Obviously, I mentioned a while ago, your 90s number, a restricted player can be the kicker. If he wants to be, he or she. Kickoff will initiate from the kicking team's own 45-yard line. Goes out of bounds untouched. The ball will be spotted at the receiving team's 45-yard line. Must travel a minimum of 10 yards on an onside uh, kick attempt. The ball does not travel 10 yards. The receiving team will take possession of the ball where it goes out of bounds, where the kicking team touches it, or where the play is whistled down. If the receiving team touches the ball, the ball will be live and may be recovered by the receiving or kicking team. If the receiving team touches the ball before it goes 10 yards, coach a reminder that and recover the ball. The ball belongs to the receiving team. If the kickoff team goes into the end zone untouched, or the kickoff goes into the end zone untouched, goes through the end zone, be a touchback, the ball will be placed at the 25-yard line. Fair catch rule is in effect on all kickoffs. Once again, no blocking below the waist. Talk briefly just about some penalties. I won't cover every penalty here. Some that I will we'll hit on here for a few minutes. Uh, we'll talk about some five-yard penalties, obviously, legal motion to lay a game, pass beyond the line of scrimmage, more than 11 players, things like this. You'll be able to see your rules when you get your packets uh, this coming Wednesday. Take a look at those rules that I'm going through right now. Make sure you understand those rules. Some 10-yard offensive penalties include holding, clipping, pass interference, and intentional grounding. Some five-yard offensive penalties include offsides, more than 11 players on the field, or tripping. Uh, more, another 10-yard defensive penalty may include holding or pass interference. 15-yard penalties coaches from the, will be a, from the spot of the foul include a late hit, a necessary roughness, face mask, horse collar. Let's talk a little bit, coaches, about flagrant or intentional helmet-to-helmet -hel -helmet contact targeting or spearing uh, by an offensive or defensive player. Uh, first warning coach, a, a warning for the player involved. The coach will be uh, advised of who the player was if we had a head-to-head -head intentional contact. 
Uh, first offense, like I said, will be a warning. Second offense by that same player will be an automatic ejection from that particular game and the following game. Uh, there's just no room in, in, in any type of football organization at any level for a helmet to helmet or a spearing just because you're mad or upset and want to take it out on kid. We're, we're not going to play that game. We're not going to play. Uh, we're not going to play that way. So you teach your kids to play hard, hit hard, uh, use that equipment like they need to use it legally, obviously. But those flagrant intentional helmet to helmet contacts will be extremely severe. Uh, we want to make sure the safety of the kids is of the utmost uh, present for the games. Obviously, make sure if there's any question you want to visit with the official about that, sure, but that'll be an official's call uh, on the field and they'll let you know when that does happen. Unsportsmanlike conduct, penalties, coaches, players, and fans. First events is a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Second events, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down, the coach or player or fan being asked to leave the playing area. Individuals ejected from the game will be contacted by our office on that following Monday morning to come by for a visit to see what happened on that. So take care of your kids, take care of yourselves, coaches. Sideline control, let's touch that just for a little bit. All players and coaches must remain between the 25 yard lines during the game. Spectators must remain at least 10 yards behind the sidelines. For the most part, AISD has their ropes up for their middle school game, so you'll be able to tell where that is. So in other words, just get behind the ropes is where you'll need to be. If anyone is yelling or verbally abusing the officials, coaches, players, or spectators, they'll be asked to leave by the officials. Uh, no one is to be in the end zone. If you'll help us with that. As far as our officials, our three-man crew will be used for every game. Our officiating staff shall be held to the same professional standards as you coaches, players, and our spectators. Coaches, for you, just briefly, uh, head coach, as we talk about, is responsible for the physical and mental well-being of all children while entrusted in their care maintaining an adequate level of discipline on his or her team, the conduct control of their team's fans, our chain crews, spectators, making sure ensuring minimum playing time is met for all players. Uh, so coaches, we're holding you accountable for a lot of things there, but take care of your team, take care of your kids, uh, take care of your fans. That's a, tough, that's a tough spot right there, but help me with your coaches for sure. Our officials will deal with you as the head coach and talk to you only. We don't want to visit with an assistant coach. Uh, all the way through the game. So make sure that you know that the, your assistant coaches know that we'll visit with you about situations that come up on the sideline or a certain call on a certain play. Code of conduct, this is for everybody. Obviously coaches, players, spectators, our officials. Profane, obscene, abusive, or degrading language in the presence of anyone attending a Kids Incorporated event is prohibited. Do not handle a child in an aggressive and abusive manner, meaning don't let's don't grab a player by the helmet or the face mask and put him over here or drag him over here. We're not going to tolerate that, coaches. I certainly want our parents to make sure to let us know if that happens to their child. Obviously, we're not going to uh, grab a kid and physically move him over one player or another, kick him in the tail to get him from one place to the other. Coach, there's a way to handle kids. There, there really is. Uh, you, can, you can move a kid if you need to or talk to a kid however you need to do it, but putting your hands on a kid is a no-win situation for you or anybody else who does that. So please adhere to our code of conduct. Uh, make sure that we don't have an ineligible player playing out there. Everybody's, everybody's on the team. Certainly everybody has a, a They've been registered, they've paid, and they're on that roster, okay? Uh, except the decision of our game officials on the field is being fair and call the best of their ability. This does not mean you cannot question a call in a proper manner, so please take care of that if you will, coaches. Do not criticize opposing team, players, coaches, or fans by words or gestures. Use of drugs, alcohol, tobacco in any form is not permitted while attending any Kids Incorporated event. Do not knowingly permit an ineligible player to play in any game. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, doing so result in the forfeiting of that game and indefinite suspension from Kids Incorporated from you, obviously, Coach. So in other words, please you, please you good sportsmanship and coaches make sure that Kids Incorporated can defend you at practices, at games, whatever you're doing out, out there. Your assistant coaches, our officials, myself, our staff, everybody involved with Kids Incorporated, uh, we've got to be able to defend everybody. So if you get upset or lose it on the sideline, uh, do the best you can to hold that in and give me a call on Monday morning, come by, we'll certainly sit down and visit about it, but certainly don't, uh, don't lose it or get out of control on the field out there in front of all those kids. That means a head coach, assistant, spectators, even kids. 
uh, that's, a, that's a poor example of sportsmanship by either your team or both teams. Uh, Kids Incorporated will not allow that. So please make sure that we take care of that with your team meetings and make sure any questions that come up, Coach, you're the guy we want to talk to and that's who we'll address during the games. If we need to visit on Monday morning, as I mentioned, certainly come by and visit with me. More than happy to talk to you about that time. Well, at the end of the day, Coach, football's about fun, teaching basics, uh, teaching fundamentals, teaching good skills teaching these 4th, 5th, and 6th graders how to handle themselves on the football field. If they want to continue to play in the junior high level, you're the starting point for them and, and the fundamental uh, way of teaching uh, the game of football is in your hands. These rules will certainly help you. Our guides at Kids Incorporated will certainly help you, but uh, I just appreciate you, Coach, and all coaches coaching in our Kids Incorporated Tackle Football program this year. And if you have any questions of me, certainly make sure you call, come by, and you know, I'll visit with you at any time in our office. Thanks, coaches, and you guys have a good year. We'll see you on the field.